how we know we're similar or not is the level of trauma we experience as a child because then we know how if we've got similar triggers and if we know how to soothe one another now being traumatized as a child like you were with a combination of abuse here's the thing parents can um, traumatize you in two different ways mm. one can be active where they actively abuse you negative physical emotional actually abuse you the other can be passive where they don't give you support and they give you neglect and they don't show concern for your emotion both are equally damaging both are so people when they think of trauma they think well nobody hit me in the house i can't be that true and i was never sexually abused so i'm not traumatized but having a parent watching you in pain and not offering you a hand is trauma mm. because what happens then is a child has no one to soothe their emotions when they're going through pain they have no one to soothe them so nobody's there to kind of coddle them so they then have to do it to themselves and they don't know how to soothe themselves so they develop coping mechanisms mm. and what these coping mechanisms tend to look like is very self-sabotaging what a coping mechanism might be is being incredibly addicted to something it might be addicted to a person might be addicted to a feeling might be addicted to a substance but it's a way of calming yourself down but it's false calm mm. it's not the pain is still there and it's how you know the pain is still there is the moment somebody replicates anything that reminds you of either the abuse or the neglect you react as if they've burnt you alive mm. you react as if you burnt them alive and they're going to try and give you water but you're rejecting it and then blaming them for not saving you that's what it really feels like when you've been traumatized and it's really difficult because the person who's been traumatized wants nothing more than love but because it's so unfamiliar to them when they get it they're suspicious of it and they reject it and they test it and they they punish the person who's trying to love them unless they meet somebody who's bad for them when they meet somebody who's bad for them and is also abusive and is also neglectful this feels familiar i know how to navigate this person i'm going to love you with all my heart but somebody who's consistent caring and loving what's wrong with you why are you loving me this can't be real let me test you let me swear at you let me shout at you let me pretend to break up with you let me test you but you the abusive neglectful narcissistic kind of partner you're exactly what the doctor ordered i know exactly what to do with you so i'm going to love you endlessly so the person ends up being very traumatized and re-traumatizing themselves and reincarnating the abuse almost almost voluntarily but of course it's not voluntary it's all like a you have like trauma is like a little puppet master that tells cycle. you mm. yeah what to do so that's the baseline of trauma when you get abused as a child you develop a core belief and what that core belief will be is no one loves you no one cares about you you're unworthy and you deserve this because this is what a child's going to learn they're not going to learn i hate my dad my dad's horrible my mum's a bitch they're not going to learn that because we are programmed to love our parents whether we like it or not we it's in us because if we don't love them we have no one to save us we die so we're programmed to love them when they start abusing us we don't stop and think dad's on a substance mum is just really detached we think i'm unlovable mm -hmm. i'm disagreeable i'm the problem so we had developed this deep down inside of us and then we go through life looking for people to validate that belief so we look for somebody who reminds us that we're unlovable mm -hmm. we deserve pain when we meet somebody who doesn't remind us of that that's weird that's uncomfortable you almost punish them i yeah. think if we're trying to love you and they're there like but i did, I, i love you. i don't understand what, what yeah. and you're there like you you have this trigger and you explode at them and then afterwards you're like but this is all i've ever wanted why am i punishing my right. partner and you're almost then crying and they're like looking at you like you're bipolar but it's because you have that inner child that's broken and the adult that wants to be with this healthy relationship right and they're constantly battling each other here's the thing with independence it only comes when we feel safe it doesn't come just like that so what i mean by this is you have a 2 year old so this is why it's so beautiful because you get to see it in live when your 2 year old knows you're in the room she'll probably be running around playing kissing people or being absolutely fine the moment you leave she gets anxious children need to know that they're loved first then they can explore the environment then they can go out and do be independent but if they're not loved by their parents they can't be independent they're constantly looking for codependency because they don't feel safe so you having an abusive father and a neglectful mother mm. means there's no way you could have enjoyed your independence at 15 it's mm. like 
it's like matter of death for you at 15. But when you've got really loving and secure, safe parents, you can do anything by yourself. Now, what happens then is then when you get into relationships, until you feel safe and secure, you can't calm down. You can't soothe yourself. So, and I have the same problem. I'm super clingy and uh, with <laughs> separation, I associate separation with paranoia. I get angry and I get upset and, uh, you know, I need a lot of soothing afterwards. But once, if I get my soothing, the moment I'm triggered and I get contact and I get relief, I let go. But if it's prolonged periods of no contact and prolonged periods of separation, I self-sabotage as well. So what I'll do is I'm not calling you. You didn't even think to call me this morning. And I'm causing myself the pain. So the, the key is actually checking in and having rituals having check-in rituals morning lunch evening Mm. or it might just be uh, i know every night we're going to facetime before bed it soothes the anxiety a little bit but the problem with people like us who are anxious is we want to see that they want the same level of intimacy as we do we're like how come you haven't checked in how come you you can sleep without calling me first you must not love me but they can do that because they grew up with a knowledge that people that love them come back So it's not that they don't love us and don't miss us. They trust the process. Whereas we associate their independence with they must not love us. So we have to find a mutual ground. Mm. You have to learn his independence is not a detachment from you. It's simply because he trusts you and knows you're coming. He's coming home to you. And your love has made him independent. Whereas for you, that is a signal that you don't love me and need me the way I need you. You go away. But he just has to simply remind, remember that he, you just need rituals, predictable rituals, and you will calm down. Oh, no, amazing. it's not easy. It's wow. not easy. Uh, it takes a bit of time and it yeah. takes a bit of effort. But the abandonment you suffered, and here's the thing with a lot of people who have abusive fathers, um, what happens is they become then super loyal to the mum and super attached to the mum because they think, okay, this is the one parent that stayed with me. She's going to be super loyal. Chances are she's usually a bit broken as well because only a broken person attaches to an abusive man. Mm. so then she lets you down it's only a matter of time before that that mum lets you down either through the form of a stepdad who's also abusive or in the form of I can't handle you anymore can you go do it yourself Mm. so that mother also lets you down and so the child is thinking the one parent I thought would save me from my dad is just as bad but in a different way and so the child goes through life looking for love and having no idea where to find it and the people who are supposed to love you so when the people who have no choice but to love you choose not to, you think, how the hell is a random stranger going to love me? Exactly. And the worst thing is what we do when we're traumatized is we pick bad partners on purpose because then we can say, well, uh, he was abusive or he was a cheat. He was. We almost deliberately pick the bad partners.